What's up, Rudo? She Tree Surgeon here, and will she go? Oh, the Bangkok bagger never disappoints. Well, I mean, it has disappointed once, but it didn't disappoint me. It disappointed Shelby. It broke down on him uh, in the middle of the bridge, actually. Pretty bad. Coming as a surprise to no one, I'm running late. I'm running late. My fuel gauge is on E, so not only... Oh, no! Can I squeeze by this guy? Not only am I running late, but I got to stop at the stab and grab. Oh, I think I'm going to be able to get by him. I think there's enough room even for this big old pig. Yep. See ya. Okay, we've got four minutes, so I got, I got time to avoid getting uh, perforated at the stab and grab, get a little bit of go juice, and then meet the boys behind the dirty shame for my premiere, and then a ride. Oh my gosh, gas pump is so slow, I'd have to speed up to stop. All right, well, let's rock and roll. I think I can make it there with like maybe negative two minutes to spare. Oh, yep, it's uh, 10 o'clock right now. <laughs> <laughs> and normally I do my premiere at home from the computer, but me and Kyle, uh, you guys know Kyle from the channel, Mr. Drunk in a Field. Since we're in the middle of our riding season here in Florida, we're talking about starting to organize group ri weekly group rides that uh, start at the Dirty Shame and end at the Dirty Shame on Sundays. Now, now don't hold me to that. I don't know if we're going to be able to do them every week, but we're talking about it, and today is the first one. And if you're like, I didn't, I didn't know this group ride was happening. Well, me and Kyle, <laughs> Drunk in a Field on Instagram, both posted about it on Instagram so I let people know that there was a group ride coming up as I said I don't know if we're gonna be able to do them every week I get so busy I freaking I, I'm just like running around doing a bunch of stuff and it's none of the stuff I don't hate any of the stuff I'm doing I love all the stuff I'm doing I'm having fun I'm working on motorcycles we're doing crazy stuff traveling across the country but at the end of the day one of my most favorite thing to do on motorcycles one of my absolute the thing that made me fall in love with motorcycles period is riding motorcycles with my friends it's like man you know what now that it's nice out we need to do more of that so me and kyle got together and we said let's spend more time with our friends more time with our friends on two wheels so that's what we're gonna do baby but i do have a premiere that uh started two minutes ago <laughs> so let me hurry up and get there and uh anybody who's waiting behind the dirty shame right now uh worry i guess oh no i just missed it. how do i drive to work every day and i am just i'm like oh i missed the turn oh my gosh wow today's gonna be a freaking winner in it <laughs> i thought i missed the turn then i was like no i didn't but i actually did anyway anybody who showed up behind the dirty shame and is sitting back there now i guess we can just watch the premiere live together come on bubba we got places to be motorcycle stuff to do come on we ain't got time for this <laughs> as they let the chicken cross the road come on trust me the chickens will get out of the way they have a will to live they will not wait in front of your car to get run over all right we're gonna make it with negative four minutes to spare. Perfect. Okay, outside the dirty shame with the roosters crowing, the gang's all here. I made everybody wait on me while I did my premiere. No one seems mad, but uh, they could stage a revolt right now and it would be bad. <laughs> we got my man Jack here, a uh, blue friend, of course. The vices of a Viking, aka Santa Claus. We got Mike Branch rides. You're, probably, you're doing a video today, right? I am doing a video today. Hell yeah, dude. We gotta get you some horrible patches for those for those vests, y'all. I don't see one pair of titties on them. For all the places I haven't been, I'm going to pay. <laughs> I love it. Oh my God, I love it, demonetized. Dude, it goes perfectly with my shirt. Here, hold the camera. They match. Have you seen my dad's? <laughs> <laughs> my man over here still with Purple Rain. I think he's calling it Ursula, but it'll always be Purple Rain in my heart. Of course, my- the Barney Glide, get it. The Barney Glide, I love it. Sage over here riding with his dad, which I think is just about the coolest thing in the world, man. Every time I see that, I'm just like, man, Sage is riding with his dad. How awesome is that? I was like, man, I wish I could ride with my dad. Then I'm like, wait a second, I hate my dad. <laughs> Checking out Sage's bike over here. Twisted spokes, freaking clean as hell. His dad found it in a barn, just like dripping with chrome. I don't care what anybody says. I love a bike that's covered in chrome because chrome, you can brag on. When your bike's nothing but flat black, you ain't got nothing to brag about because there's nothing to clean on it. If you show up and your bike looks like that, you can be proud of it. Matte black never looks clean. What looks clean is chrome. Now, it takes a lot of work, but you, again, you get to be proud of it. I don't know who didn't get the memo about the Goldwing party up here, or the, da the dad bagger party. Freaking old, our old glides over here. I brought my Goldwing. We've got Ursula, the Barney Glide, Purple Rain, our concourse, the freaking, the, the, the taupe terror over here. And then Mike brings his freaking goddamn triumph. 
I mean, come on, dude. Who do you think you are bringing a nice motorcycle here? A British Jack's Teller. <laughs> what it looks like is a British mullet. <laughs> It's like, it's like, hey, they didn't finish it. What happened to the ass end of that thing? So, Uncle Bogator, that's the 1500. Yeah. Uncle Bogator is an award-winning muscle machine. I saw that. You got a brand new prize on that thing. Did that video come out yet? Not yet. I'm putting that together. Yeah, you know, he entered his bike, he entered the gold wing in a freaking bike show and it won a prize. First place. Yeah. Oh, is that what it said on it? Yeah. Yeah, it's more like a, you know, why don't you give that poor kid over there a prize or else he's going to go home and cry in his mama's tent. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. <laughs> Rolling out as Princess Purple Rain sings us on down the road. How perfect, baby. Rolling down 7th Avenue with a big pack of my buddies on motorcycles. Feels good, baby. I like bike. Mm, the best thing about this ride is that Kyle, drunk in the field, is the one who's organizing it and leading it. That's why if something horrible happens or goes wrong or people don't have a good time, well, it's not Shade Tree Surgeon's fault. It's drunk in the field's fault. Listen up, y'all. I make passing the buck into an art form. Organizing a group ride with a bunch of bikers, it can be like herding cats. And between running the bar and everything else I'm doing right now with Forgotten Angels, I honestly I don't have as much free time as I would like. Luckily, the time that I am, like as I said before, the time that I am spending working is really quality time. It's stuff that I'm really enjoying. But when it comes to organizing something like this, I really just rely on my friends to help me out and do it. Oh, and it makes me feel real good. Judas Priest, come on, man. The one true dad, Rob Halford. Ugh. Why couldn't Rob Halford be my dad? I don't care what you want to say about Judas Priest or Rob Halford. Anybody who every single concert they do rides a motorcycle out on stage, that guy's freaking awesome. Did you just get that? Okay, I was about to say, that looks like a dad's bike. Oh, you could do worse than that, man. I love the Slim. That's a good looking bike. I was just talking all this crap about Matt Black, but this looks pretty good with the satin covers. Man, I love this. I love all the different motorcycles here right now. We got everything from Yamaha Dyna Bolts to Harley Davidson Adventure bikes, couple of Gold Wings, a vintage Kawasaki Concourse, Harley Davidsons, and just a BMW. It runs the gamut, man. And I mean, obviously everyone just goes like, oh, well, my friend group, the people I know, they're the best. But man, I'll tell you, the people that end up hanging around, the people that I know, and also just the people who watch the videos, they just span everything. They just love motorcycles. If it's got two wheels and a motor, they usually love it. And that is so cool. And don't get me wrong, I love Harley Davidson and I, I love my Harleys and I love Burt's Harley Davidson, but there ain't a whole lot of brand loyalty around here. We just like engines, two wheels, and loud noises. Well, maybe not so loud noises on the Goldwing, but you, you catch my drift. I've said that before and I'll say it again. Out of every single thing I love about YouTube, and I've got no problems with YouTube. I know a lot of people have problems with it and it upsets them but man i love youtube it's given me a lot i understand that it can be incredibly frustrating for some people and i put in 10 years of hard work to get where i am but i'm still speaking from a position of privilege with the amount of subscribers i do even though it's tiny in comparison to a lot of channels but the number one thing i love about youtube is i promise you the absolute number one is the people on this ride right now there's probably i don't know like a dozen people i didn't i didn't really count you know i'm not very good at math i graduated early in the 10th grade out of what Whatever, about a baker's dozen motorcycles that are here and the people that are on them, the only people here that I didn't meet through YouTube, that I didn't meet because of making videos, is Kyle, drunk in a field up there, and Sage, I'll have to put Sage's Instagram down below, and Sage and his dad. Those are the only people that I don't know because of YouTube. Every other person on this ride is here because of making videos, and they're my real life friends. And not only are they my real life friends, but they've become friends with my other real life friends. Like, dude, all these guys, they go riding with Kyle and Sage all the freaking time. And all of this came about because of make, making some stupid videos on motorcycles. And when I say it's the people, that's my number one thing that I love the most about YouTube. I think a lot of people wouldn't believe me. They'd be like, oh, that sounds like some old hogwash. You're just feeding people who are watching the channel because you want to make them feel good and you're trying to suck their dicks or something like that. I promise you, it's not. You're seeing it in action right here, here on this ride. And everybody on this ride, I've known three people since before I did YouTube. And every other single person here is because the videos and they're all friends too and i it makes me so happy 
just meeting all these people that I would have otherwise never even known existed. I say it all the time. I, I don't understand when, when someone says, I hate people. I just hate people. I just can't stand people. I, I'm just like, man, I, I, why is that such a popular thing to say? I love people. You know, most of my best friends are people. People are awesome. Yeah, like, yeah, some people are bad, sure. Uh, but I don't really think anybody's truly bad in their heart. Just some people are capable of bad things. But man, I just, I, I love people, man. Come on now. Hell yeah. Dude, looks like they're doing it too. I saw Harleys and an adventure bike. It's cashing on, baby. I'll tell you guys, that's one of the big reasons that I'm so excited about the next Forgotten Angels camp out. If you watch my videos regularly, you'll know about Forgotten Angels. You'll know about the charity work we're doing with them. Uh, what you'll also know about is that we're throwing another camp out. This will be the third Forgotten Angels camp out. It's happening March 19th. If you've been to any of the other ones, you guys will know that it is a hellacious, bodacious, insane freaking party. I, with respect, with respect, I mean, yeah, we get wild, we get loose, but it still is actually family friendly. People bring their kids. I mean, obviously it's on a property where all these young men live in their tiny homes. They all live there. So we are respectful, but <laughs> we still, trust me, we still get sideways out there. It's fun. You ask anybody who went to it and you don't have to take my word for it. There's plenty of other people who made videos on it. Uh, Mike Branch back there made a video Video on it, Biker Babe Beth, a whole bunch of other people that I can't think about right now because I'm really enjoying my motorcycle ride with all my friends right now. But what I want to do is I want to enjoy a motorcycle ride with all of you guys. And I, a lot of people told me, even though it was a little stressful for me because I was leading the ride and there was a ton of people on it. Dude, the ride from Burt's Barracuda to Forgotten Angels, the last one we did, we were really, I, we had to have been like 200 bikes deep and everybody was just of a like mind. Everybody almost knew each other because we're all here for the same reason a lot of people watch the channel and we all got to ride together and it was so freaking cool and I want you guys to come down and do that everybody is welcome you don't have to buy a raffle ticket although please do buy a raffle ticket to win the lowrider s you don't even have to come with any money you don't have to come with anything I tell you guys all the time one of the things I hate is excluding people I absolutely despise gatekeeping it's one of my least favorite things in the world and when it comes to most motorcycles if you're a gatekeeper if you're trying to keep anybody out of it you are on my shit list i'll tell you that right now so in order to come to the camp out you don't have to have anything you don't even need to have a motorcycle if you want to come to the camp out you can come there and not spend a single dollar it's the weekend of march 19th you can camp for free there will be free beer free food free entertainment you if you have enough gas money to get there and a tent to sleep in or maybe just a hammock to string between two trees you can come and not spend a single dollar all weekend and if you have extra money please buy a raffle ticket throw some money in the pot when you're there to help buy beer for everybody else because this is an event that those who have a lot give a little more and if you don't have anything to give besides your presence if you don't have anything to bring with you besides you as a person i still want you there i want you to come and i want you to experience it and I want you to be around all these people and see what it's like I want to shake your hand even if you come up there and you don't have a single dollar to spend we'll feed you we'll get you drunk and you'll have a place to sleep for three days I that's what I love about this community like obviously motorcycles cost money to have and maintain and it's like so like I said you don't even have to have a motorcycle even if you don't have a bike you can still show up there man you can show up and sleep in your car if you want to we'll still get you drunk for three days and feed you three squares every single day we got you because that's what I'm about that's what Forgotten Angels is about it's about helping people who don't have a lot it's about being part of something bigger even if you have nothing to give but your goodwill and your presence and if you want to go out there and you have nothing to contribute if you got a strong back come out and do that they can always use help around the property you can show up out there early help clean up the property help get it ready for the camp out trust me they'll put you to work if you want to work the other reasons I just want people to come out is so you can see what I see what you can experience what I experience and not just at Forgotten Angels even though I do want you to see that I want you to come out there and I want you to see where all this money is going it doesn't hit any branches on the way down you know Dave and Cindy let people use the bathroom in their house I mean we have other places to use the bathroom as well but they're letting people use the bathroom in their house you can see the house they live in it's not nice you can see David's motorcycle it's also not nice you know none of this money is going to them none of this money is lining their pockets it's not going to my pocket I don't take a single dollar from this raffle. 
100% of this money goes to benefit these young men, goes to make their lives better, goes to give them the chance that they never had. These kids who have been physically abused, sexually abused, they've been beat on, spit on, and shit on their whole freaking lives, abandoned by their parents, people who are supposed to care the most. The minute they turn 18, abandoned by the government that's supposed to look out for them, and a lot of them are made homeless. And Dave and Cindy, and through all of y'all's help and every single raffle ticket you buy, you give them a second chance at life, or not even a second chance, their first chance because they never even got a chance before. You know, how many of you guys were just grown-ups the second you turned 18? Well, that's what the state says they are. And out there, they help them build tiny homes. They teach them responsibility. They help them get jobs. Some of them join the military. Some of them go to college. They help them become productive members of society where otherwise they would have fallen through the cracks, fallen prey to abuse, fallen prey to drug abuse, gone to jail, been homeless, just been the dregs of society. And instead, because of all y'all's help and your generosity with every raffle ticket you buy, they're getting that chance that they never got. And it's truly amazing. And you can see it. You don't have to take my word for it. Show up at March 19th. Show up at the Forgotten Angels property. Show up at the compound. Come to the camp out. You can talk to the boys. The boys are all there and they'll talk to everybody. They hang out. They help work the event. They're there. They'll tell you their stories. And you can see with your own eyes. You ain't got to take my word for it. Oh! oh. <laughs> the mail order glide is struggling to keep up, baby. Everyone's like, oh, those 1,500 gold wings are fast. Well, not this one. My buddy Matt says has been watching the videos for years. He gave me a bunch of good tips on how to fix what's, fix what's wrong with my gold wing. He's probably down there in the comments cussing me right now, being like, I told you how to fix what was wrong with it. Why haven't you done it yet? Well, but you know, because I'm out riding my half-broken motorcycle with all my buddies and drinking beer and having a good time and talking shit. That's why I haven't fixed it. If I, if I, if I had to sit down and fix it, I wouldn't be here. We've reached our destination, which is uh, San Ann Liquors and Lounge, baby. Let me tell you, I love a liquor store lounge. Uh, dicey things tend to happen there, and to me, that means exciting. Oh, my man's got the modular, too. You're doing it right. You got to paint it to match the bike, though. Oh, no, I painted it to match the bike. I'm going to win. Ah! <laughs> oh, I dig your style. Mmm, my kind of place. They do have a couple windows, which is not usually my preferred liquor store lounge. They usually have zero windows, but still pretty cool. And out here in the backyard of this liquor store lounge, man, and it literally looks like a backyard. Drinking beers, having fun, and guess what, baby? You know why you like getting drunk? You know why you have to have a beer? Because it feels good. That feeling good feels good, baby. Oh, woo! Huh? All right, even better than a liquor store is a liquor store with food, too. Your Reuben looks great. And I'm excited about my gator tail as well, but I'll tell you, the mushrooms look like they got dumped out of a can. <laughs> Love grilled mushrooms. I can eat mushrooms every single day. And, uh, I mean, whatever. They're so good, man. And gator's always good as well, man. Delicious. Yeah, it's good, too. Well, exciting times at San Ana Liquors and Lounge, man. I'm not going to tell the whole story, but I'll tell you guys right now. I didn't know Mike Branch had it in him. All right, well, that's going to be a, uh, a Patreon-only story. <laughs> but let's go ahead and make a quick getaway before the cops get here. Gold Wings Unite! <laughs> I never made any promises that things didn't get rowdy every once in a while with this group of friends. I just said that I liked them a lot. <laughs> it's not always a given that everybody else is going to like us, too. Man, who thought? A bunch of dudes on gold wings to get thrown out of a bar. I'm not going to tell the story, but if you go subscribe to Mike Branch, I'll have a link down below. Maybe leave a comment on his page, and maybe he'll tell the story of what happened in there. <laughs> but let me tell you, I think we ought, to, we ought to cool off that place for a minute. Mike Branch on his fa fancy bobber, and his ass is hurting when he's got a perfectly good gold wing at home. Okay, back to Ybor City where it's safe. Back to the dirty shame where people understand us. What can we say, man? With this pack of freaks, geeks, and weirdos, eh, every once in a while, there might be a few people when we go to some place out in the sticks that don't take too kindly to us. But give me a break. It's all love, baby. And if they would only open their heart to our greasy, slimy, disgusting, invading love, then, uh, you know, they could be a part of Shade Tree Army too, but not everybody's ready for it, baby. It's all right. Not everybody's ready for our throbbing gristle. <laughs> Hell yeah. I freaking love it, man. What a pack of ne'er-do-wells, 
thieves, liars, and scoundrels. Couldn't think of a better group of people to spend my time with. Did I just not get this on camera? Everyone's over here talking shit, talking about how they gotta piss and get a beer. And my man, Malk and Seer over here just come sliding in, in reverse. <laughs> no big deal, what a bunch of hard asses. <laughs> <laughs> Hard as a concrete dildo, baby. Yeah. Hey, Kirby, Mike started a fight. Nice. Riding off into the sunset. It looks cool, but it hurts. I know. <laughs> I'll tell you, I freaking love that, man. It's so cool seeing Sage and his dad, Sage and Dale out there freaking riding together on a bike that Dale helped him find. I think that's just about the coolest thing I ever saw. <laughs> Legitimately. Warms the cockles of your heart. Maybe even the subcockle area. So, right now, this is actually Kyle's old bike. This is the old Dynabolt that uh, Mike Myers the barber bought, uh, Wizard Overcome. This is a Yamaha Bolt, and you guys know that I have rabbit ears on my Yamaha SS650. So these are pretty much, th these are the same bars that I have on my XS650 because uh, most metric bikes, especially Yamaha's distance in between here on the tri top triple tree is the same. So if you have a Bolt or probably a Shadow or a bunch of other little bikes like that or whatever you have, you can get these from Zombie Performance, which is where I got mine. So it's not a Harley spacing, but it is a metric spacing. And I think that's really cool. And uh, Mike said I can ride it, so I'm going to. Oh, you don't have to pull in the clutch? Nice. So I am used to riding with rabbit ears because I rode my XS650 a very far distance, way farther than you should normally ride a <laughs> hardtail bike, although plenty of people have gone farther with rabbit ears. And I will tell you, yeah, I was like, maybe these aren't the same. They're still from Zombie Performance, which is where I got mine. But now that I'm sitting on this, I'm like, nope, these are exactly the same bars, definitely. <laughs> and they're exactly the same. Like it's bringing back these memories to where it's like, it feels kind of weird to ride them and not have a foot clutch right now. <laughs> I love it. There's just something about rabbit ears that feels so sketchy and so fun. It just feels so dangerous. It makes you just love it a little bit more. I love this with the rabbit ears. Again, though, like Yamaha and a lot of the metric brands, they just, they never set up their bikes for customization. The Bolt was supposed to be set up for customization. It was supposed to be this bike that like, oh, you can make it into whatever bike you want. You can do whatever you want with it. But then they just give you all this weird wiring stuff in the gauges and the headlight and all the stuff that just makes it way harder to customize and it's like they uh, they sit there and they say oh you can customize make it whatever you want they make all these parts that they sell for it but then they make all this stuff to change up stuff in the front end and to do stuff that requires different wiring they make that a pain in the ass it's like guys you you're you're making it hard to actually customize the bike you're making it easy to bolt stuff on there's a difference yeah i love it there's just something about rabbit ears that just makes you feel so freaking cool on a motorcycle. It just makes you want to lean back, let your arms hang, lean back into like a big old king and queen seat and just cruise on down the road. I dig it a lot, I'm not gonna lie to you. I think rabbit ears, that's my favorite kind of chopper handlebar. You can you can keep your ape hangers, all right? You can keep your T-bars. Rabbit ears, that's where it's at. <laughs> rabbit ears are sketchy, and you know what's really fun on a sketchy motorcycle? Going fast, baby. <laughs> or at least going as fast as the motorcycle can. Yo, Mike has even got the Kung Fu grips from Biltwell, which is exactly why it feels exactly like my XS. Oh man, I really need to fix that bike. I miss it. Okay, well, Jenna says, you want to ride my FZ09? I said, shit, girl, I ain't scared. I'll ride anything you got, baby. I'm just kidding. Be respectful. That's Kyle's girlfriend. So I've ridden an FZ07 or an MT07. I've never ridden an FZ09. Whenever I get on somebody's bike and they don't put it in neutral when they park it, I'm like, you goddamn Philistine. All right, FZ09, let's see what all the hype is about. Everybody says they love this bike. This loud ass exhaust on them, and it feels very comfortable. 
Um, I just what I've seen and heard about these things is that the motor's great, the suspension sucks, which usually sounds like a bike I'm gonna like, man. All motor, no suspension, and no brakes. <laughs> That's what I do like, man. Nothing but danger. <laughs> It's got a beat, I can dance to it. It does wheelies though, that's cool. I dig it, I like it. This is a cool bike. You could find worse ways to spend your money. All right, y'all, it's the next day. I'm at my garage at home with, uh, I don't even wanna talk about that bike. A lot of people have been asking what happened to the GL500. Uh, they've been going like, well, you rode it across the country. What happened after that? Well, what happened after that is the battery died literally two days uh, after that, which was uh, very, very cool. <laughs> very cool in so much as I rode that bike across the country. I rode it over 3,000 miles and the battery died two days after I got back. The fact that it didn't happen on the road is just further proof that God loves a fool. He knows that we need a little bit of extra help, so he let it die here. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw a new battery in it and I haven't ridden this thing in a while. I might be feeling a little fuzzy from last night, but a nice easy day when you're feeling a little bit fuzzy on old Turd Ferguson over here with 30 screaming horsepower, or however many this 500cc engine makes sounds like just the ticket. I always like it when you can remove a battery from a motorcycle with literally one tool. We'll take the old shop truck up to get a new battery. I'm trying out a new place that my buddy Blue Friend told me about. Now, normally I would just be a man and hurl that battery into the ocean with all of my might, but Blue Friend told me about a place called Square Deal Batteries, and apparently they rebuild batteries. They sell used batteries that they've rebuilt themselves for like 20 or 30 bucks, and with a six month warranty. So for 20 bucks and a six month warranty, dang man, that's worth a shot. I actually need to put two big old batteries in my F350 in the 7.3 liter. And uh, let me tell you, when you go to buy batteries for that thing, that can be like four or 500 bucks for a decent set of batteries. So I'm gonna try out Square Deal and I'm just talking about it right now. You know, I don't know any of the guys up there, just my buddy Blue friend, a Discord guy, uh, and a regular at the Dirty Shame. We were where he was actually on the ride. Oh, that would happen earlier in this video he's the one who told me about it and uh <laughs> cammy doesn't know it yet you guys might remember cammy she's been in a bunch of old videos and she really wants to start riding again and uh she doesn't know that she's gonna ride today but i told her uh you know what why don't you come over let's hang out we're just uh I, she thinks she's just coming over to hang out but i'm gonna make her get on a motorcycle so i gotta get that bike running oh my gosh so many batteries that i could throw into the ocean amazing oh as they say, there's only like three degrees of separation from anybody in Tampa. Funny enough, I walk uh, walk up to the front of Square Deal here and I know the guy who's working here from the bar. Didn't even know he worked here. And not only does he work here, he just goes, hey Josh, I was like, holy crap, didn't expect to see you. And then he says, oh yeah, no, I've, uh, I've always been here. He goes, my family has owned this shop for 70 years. So Square Deal Battery, uh, I would say if they've been in business for that long, they've been around putting batteries in cars and motorcycles for the past 70 years that's a pretty good indicator that they're doing right by people okay and in the day of there not being any deals anymore i'm sorry guys this day and age with inflation everything going on it gets rare and rare to find somebody who's willing to give you a good deal and that was a good deal. Well, let's get back to the garage <laughs> and get Cammy's little surprise ready. I don't know how she's gonna feel. I don't know if she's gonna be scared. I don't know if she's gonna be mad. I don't know if she's gonna be stoked. I think maybe like some combination of all three of those things, I hope. But you know what? That girl ain't been on a motorcycle in like five years. It's time, okay? All right, moment of truth. Well, if I'm gonna sit Cammy on this thing, it's probably not a bad idea to take it around the block and make sure everything's okay. Although, I mean, come on. I took it on a 3,000 mile trip across the country. What could be wrong with the bike? Bra maybe a lot of things, but <laughs> let's test it out. Whew. The Silver Wing rides again. Oh yeah, that's familiar. <laughs> It really does not make start making any power whatsoever until you're just wringing its neck above 7,000 RPM. I think it makes its peak horsepower at like almost nine grand or something. It's pretty ridiculous for this little tiny bike. When you say words like peak horsepower, it makes you think something along the lines of like, oh, that's when it makes power. But make it doesn't really make power. It just sort of uh, 
proceeds. So I'll just go ahead and say it proceeds with the maximum amount of insistence around 9,000 RPM because <laughs> I'm not going to call it acceleration and we're not going to call it peak horsepower. It didn't get the nickname Turd Ferguson for no reason at all, okay? This thing is dog shit slow, but it carried my fat ass across the country. And not only did it carry my fat ass across the country, but it's gonna get Cammy back on two wheels, man. Five years is way too long to wait. She needs to get back into it. I know people get caught up, and I know a lot of you guys watching now can't believe it. You're like, how could you? How could you know how to ride a motorcycle and not be riding a motorcycle? But life happens to some people, and it's up to you, you guys who ride all all the time, to get your friends, the ones who maybe haven't pulled their bike out of the garage in a while or haven't been on a group ride in a while. It's up to you to get them off their ass and get them back on two wheels. And and baby, that's what we're doing today. Sometimes your friends just need a little bit of a reminder that two wheels and an engine is just about the most fun you can have with your clothes on. All right, well, I rode the motorcycle across the country, so stands the reason you can you can at least ride it around the block. It's like Big Bertha. <laughs> I think you could stand it up. You're a tough girl. Oh my Look, God. Friends don't let friends not ride motorcycles, all right? You trust me, so. Yeah, it's the most fun you can have with your clothes on. Although I can think of a couple fun things with your clothes off too, all right? <laughs> all right, motorcycles first. <laughs> you can do it, I believe in you. Yeah, you can do it. Hell yeah, girl. Oh. Oh, there she goes. See ya. Hey, it's like riding a bike, right? I mean, no, literally, it's like riding a bike. She'll be fine. She'll be fine, I hope. But I probably should have told Cammy that not only is the motorcycle from 1982, but uh, seeing as I just saw her fly by there, the brakes are from 1982 as well. Never a doubt in my mind. Hell yeah. Oh my God, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> That's what we wanted to That's see. So good. Okay. Does that, fe that feel great or oh, what? Let's fucking go, dude. Hell yeah, let's rock and roll, kiddo. Me and Cammy Bay, we're about to roll out. She rode around the block. Let me tell you what, this that girl. That is so dude, fun. Uh, never a doubt in my mind. A natural. Fundamentals are the crutch for the talentless, okay? We don't need to practice, we just send it, baby. <laughs> fucking send me it. <laughs> so we're gonna go on a little dad venture. I'm gonna hang out on the Bangkok bagger, the mail order glide over here, and the lovely, the deadly, the dangerously beautiful Beautiful Cami Bay is going to be riding this uh, Big Bertha. <laughs> this Malays era Big Bertha Turd Ferguson over here. So it it only it only serves to highlight how spectacularly beautiful you are by how ugly of a bike you're you're riding and how ugly of a guy you're hanging out with. Don't worry, she's ugly on the inside. I'm kidding. <laughs> Cammy Bay back in action, back on a motorcycle and back on YouTube, baby. You know what? Feeling good feels good. You know you can ride. You were you're a little nervous at first, but uh, you know what? Now that you know you can ride, let's go ride. Not exactly the sexiest bikes for your comeback here, but that's all right. Cammy Bay back at it on the Purple Rain Special, and I'm pretty sure she's gonna leave her blinker on the entire time. You look tough. You look really good on the bike. Of course, yeah, it'd be hard for you to not look good on it. I'm not gonna. <laughs> If we're being honest here. It's like yin and yang. You can make any bike look good, and I can make any bike look bad. So mean to yourself. <laughs> no, you know who was mean to me? God, for making me look like this. I've got one question, and it's for God. Why? Definitely going to take it a little easy on Cami today. We're just going to hit a couple of local spots, a couple of local breweries here in Ybor City. Say what you want. You never forget how to ride a motorcycle, certainly. But I will tell you, you're a little shaky getting back on, especially on a bike you've never ridden before, especially on a bike with a fixed fairing like that. So I have every confidence and every faith in her. I think she's going to do just fine. She is doing just fine. But for the sake of uh, not making her feel uncomfortable, we'll take it easy. Which is also very unlike me. Normally all I do is make pretty girls feel uncomfortable. As a VIP, it's a motorcycle. I'm gonna park wherever I want until they tell me not to. You know why no one ever tells me not to do stuff? Because I look like a problem. You know what I like about you? You are a problem. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite things about Copper Tail is the Florida Special, baby. Not everybody makes a great lager, but this one's pretty good. It's about three and a half percent alcohol content, which makes it a very good, uh, very good beer to have when you're out on motorcycles. <laughs> I'm drinking rosé, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, you can take a girl to a brewery, but you can't, you can't give her any class. <laughs> I love this cheese. You're gonna build me one? Is that cheese? 
I thought that was red cabbage. <laughs> the the construction abilities right here. Okay. Lord have mercy. I'm I'm eating with my eyes. I'm wait. There's the food. Okay. No, I'm, I'm eating with my eyes okay. first. That's for sure. All right. I'm gonna try to eat it Don't real. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. All right. I'm gonna try to eat it real sexy like Cammy did. Like, but yeah, like it a little bit. <laughs> Why'd you put your lips like that? <laughs> am, I, am I doing that right? Yeah, you said delicious. <laughs> Panko encrusted shrimp burgers. It's already got the candy seal. Mm. Good times as always at Copper Tail. And let me tell you, the salt with which good times are flavored, just sprinkle a little bit of pretty girl on it and the good times are that much better. The night time is the right time. When the sun goes down, I come up. They call me the midnight misogynist, baby. Oh, it's not running? Only I can take somebody out on a motorcycle who hasn't ridden in forever and it breaks down on them. <laughs> As everybody freaking drives around her. <laughs> I promise it's gonna be fine. <laughs> Isn't life exciting? Yeah, it might be out of gas. <laughs> yeah, it was out of gas. It's on reserve now. Back at it again with the crappy bikes, baby. <laughs> I'll tell you something right now, Cammy. Hanging out with me might be a lot of things, but one thing it never is is boring. Lord have mercy, I, how can I check the gas? I was, I was too distracted by them yoga pants. I know you haven't ridden motorcycles in five years and you're on a big motorcycle you're not used to that's uh, a few years older than you are, but uh, hey, how about I don't check the gas and let it run out and freak you out in the middle of a busy road? Sounds like a night out with Shade Tree Surgeon to me. What I also didn't tell her is that she's riding completely dirty and uh, I don't know what the tag on that bike came off of, but definitely not that bike because it's not titled or tagged. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell her that tomorrow, though. I think I'm already in enough trouble tonight. <laughs> yeah, does anybody need any glass that's right now? I don't know how many of you guys know this, but Tampa has a huge tobacco history. A lot of people are surprised when they come to Florida and they see you can smoke pretty much anywhere. One of the reasons for that is that Tampa's Tampa was built on cigars. Well, cigars and, uh, you know, a few other things that maybe uh, aren't quite as legal as cigars. But anyway, Tampa was built on cigars. So there's a huge tobacco culture here, a huge cigar culture. So this is a cigar bar that's built in an old church. It's uh, Arturo Fuente Cigar Bar. And I don't smoke cigars anymore, but I do want to drink a beer in an old church. Yeah, I've never been here before, but check out this den of sin. Holy mackerel, dude. With a, so yeah, it's already in an old church. It's already sacrilegious. Then you walk in with all these red lights. I can already tell. Look at all the players. Yeah. <laughs> As two people who are in the sin, I think we're going to like this place just fine. in here is definitely uh, lo-fi beats to study to. It's definitely so, beats to yeah, study so I'm not gonna like that. I'm not gonna roll out the cameras here and be super loud, but I think we're just gonna enjoy it. I think that's about where I'm gonna end it, man. Fucking celebrate. Celebrate, baby. We're celebrating Cammy coming back on YouTube with the return of motorcycles, the return of Cammy being on YouTube. It's a, reason. it's a reason for celebration. So we're gonna sit here, we're gonna enjoy ourselves, and you'll just have to imagine what comes next. Or you won't have to imagine that hard because you're gonna see most of what comes next. Until next time, y'all, keep it weird. Yeah.